Grok has been made available in a much wider release in a number of countries all over the world, and so I wanted to create a video about telling you all about it. So what is Grok? Grok is an AI that's a direct competitor to other AI models such as ChatGPT and Claude AI. But this one specifically is spearheaded by Elon Musk. Now the purpose of, of Grok is to have another language model that isn't as biased as other language models out there. If you do a lot of searches within ChatGPT or Claude AI, for example, oftentimes you will get very biased answers. And so what Elon wanted to do was he wanted to create another competitor that was completely unbiased right down the middle and could also actually be quite funny and have a personality. This is one of the, the standout features that separates Grok from other AI models. Grok has a very funny personality and very humorous in terms of its responses. Now, if you've ever read the book Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, Grok is really based around that, which that book is a very funny take on just aliens and the universe, and it's more along the lines of being based in philosophy. But the book is very humorous and very silly, and this is the aim of Grok to adopt that kind of personality to make AI a little bit more fun and maybe a little bit more exciting. So while Grok has only been around for relatively a couple of months compared to other AI models, it's made significant advances just within a very short period of time. This chart here is an indication of the different learning models that are used uh, to train various AI programs. And so what you'll see here is you'll notice that Grok's first version, just on its own, when it comes to training on uh, middle school math problems, multiple choice questions, using Python code to complete tasks, and middle school and high school mathematical problems, it's already ahead of what GPT uh, 3.5 was, which was released some, uh, some months ago. Although it's not quite at the level of Claude or GPT-4, to make this kind of impact in such a short period of time is pretty significant. And I'm really excited about the future of, of Grok AI. And I really believe that it's gonna surpass uh, Claude and GPT-4 in the next six to 12 months to become the, the premier AI model that everyone wants to use. The other thing that sets Grok apart from other AI models is it's able to use the X platform to query information from the internet real time, which is something that other AI models cannot do. ChatGPT, for example, even in the plus version, only pulls information from the internet at this point in time, at the filming of this video, up until April 2023. So XAI does have a leg up when it comes to actually querying information. So let's go ahead and tell you how you can actually get access to it, how to use it, and I'll give it a few examples to show how powerful it really is. Grok is, is accessed with your existing x.com account, and if you're not familiar with x.com, x used to be known as Twitter, but uh, Elon changed the name not too long ago. You do need to be on the Premium Plus account. While there is a premium version and a basic version, these ones are a little bit less expensive, do give you some features, but in order to get access to Grok, you are gonna need the, pre the Premium Plus version. Now pricing for in the United States is actually $16 a month. It's, it'll be a little bit different depending on which country you're in, but the pro tip that I would give you is if you're gonna sign up for Grok, definitely do so through a web browser as opposed to doing it through your iPhone or Android device. Because Apple and Google charge a 30% tax on app developers, usually what ends up happening is developers will add on that price within the app itself in order to account for the profit that they have to give to Apple or Google. But what Elon's done is if you simply sign up through the web and through a web browser, you will pay a cheaper price than doing it through the app on your phone. Once you activate your Premium Plus account, what will happen is your tab at the, on the left-hand side here will update and you will actually get access to Grok. You're met with this screen here where it gives you certain prompts that you can go ahead and ask it. Now up at the top here, you can actually toggle between the fun mode and the regular mode. The regular mode operates the same way as ChatGPT or Claude does today, but the fun mode is really where the magic happens and this is where things can get very funny and very humorous. So if depending on your use case you are more inclined to just use it the regular way maybe because you want to actually use grok 
uh, specifically to your business uh, or maybe to uh, towards uh, creating some type of content or a blog post, you might want to keep it in regular mode. But if you just want to have fun with it and get very spicy, Grok can do that as well. So it'll all depend on what you're looking for in, at that given moment. So in this example in regular mode, what I've asked Grok to do is I indicated my prompt was, you are an expert Instagram social media manager. I want you to create a schedule for Instagram posts one over one month starting from December the 18th to 2023. The frequency of the posts will be once a day. My page is called Master AI Fast and we will be sharing tips and tricks on mastering AI tools. For each post, include the day it will be published, a heading, post text, and include relevant hashtags. The tone should be friendly. I also need you to recommend a stock image service that offers free images that I can use for my post. So you can see here in terms of Grok's response, it goes to outline the next seven days of posting and what my posting schedule should be should I decide to take advantage of this. It gives me all of the, it gives me the date, it gives me the heading, what the post uh, text should be, and then a hashtag to go along with it. And as the days go on, it seems to add more and more. And then at the very bottom, it also gives me a recommendation for using a stock image uh, service called Unsplash. And the reason why it's, why it's recommending it to me is that they offer a wide range of high quality images that can be used for Instagram posts and they have a user-friendly interface that make it easy to find perfect images. So this is just a really great example of what Grok can do compared to ChatGPT. But I wanna show you where things can get very silly and very funny and I'm going to change, I'm going to use the same prompt, but I'm actually going to change it to fun mode. So I've revised the prompt and what I've indicated to Grok is to revise the schedule, make it funny, make it more vulgar, but just for the sake of this video, avoid using swear words. And you can see here in the first post, compared to when it, what it originally had posted, which was more straightforward, very professional language, uh, more fitting for young professionals who just want to post and create a presence. But you can see here with this revision of the day one post, the text goes like this. Welcome to the first 30 days of our Instagram journey where we'll be sharing tips and tricks on mastering AI tools. It's time to unleash the AI chaos and discover how these digital wizards can help you in your daily life. So buckle up buttercup and let's get this AI party started. So a little bit more cheeky, a little bit more funny. Uh, and I actually wanna give you a completely different example on how vulgar and how funny Grok can be, but I want to do it in the context of actually replying to a customer service complaint. So I'm going to be right back with you. What I told Grok was, you're an experienced customer service specialist whose priority it is to solve problems and make customers laugh. A customer is complaining about a fridge they recently bought that broke after the first week. Create a reply email apologizing that we did not meet their expectations, but make the response funny and vulgar. You should be roasting the customer at the same time as apologizing. And so Grok's response was, you know, subject, your total, your fridge is a total piece of crap. Dear customer's name, we are so sorry to hear about the unfortunate incident with your fridge. It seems that the universe has conspired against you and we can only imagine the frustration and disappointment you must be feeling right now. We would like to extend our sincerest apologies for not meeting your expectations and for the inconvenience this has caused. It is truly a shame that your fridge decided to pull a Houdini and break down after just one week. We understand how much this might, you might be longing for a cold beverage, and the fact that your ice cream is now a puddle of sadness is just unacceptable. We take full of responsibility for this epic failure and promise to do everything in our power to make things right. To make it up to you, we would like to offer you a replacement fridge of equal or greater value, free of charge, and we'll also throw in a complimentary bottle of whatever your favorite beverage is to help ease the pain of this traumatic experience. Once again, we apologize for the inconvenience and hope that our gesture of goodwill will help restore your faith in our company. If you have any further issues, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. We're here to help, even if it's just to listen to your bitching and moaning. Warmest regards. So there's different ways that you can actually go ahead and play around with this. Of course, I've asked it to, re to refrain from using any swear words, but should you choose to, Grok can get even more vulgar and use as many swear words as you wish, and the responses are actually quite funny.
So even though Grok is Elon Musk's creation and he's working with a team of people to continue to improve it and to roll it out to many, many different countries, even he is not immune from being roasted by his own platform. And so here the query that I gave to Grok was to roast Elon Musk. And you know I'm not going to read this whole thing in its entirety, but you can see some of the lines here are pretty funny. Well, it says the first it starts off with, well, well, if it isn't the man who put the twit in Twitter, you know, it goes on to make fun of him about his obsession with X. Uh, it talks about him uh, turning Twitter into a complete dumpster fire. Uh, it, it talks about him alienating users. It talks about him being a walking meme. This is just to show you that just because someone is working on this platform and actually putting it out, this comes back to my earlier comment at the beginning. He wants Grok to be as, as based and as middle of the road as possible. It's not being biased, it's not taking sides, and even he is not absolved uh, of, of, its, of its roasting abilities. And so the one thing I would say about Grok that it doesn't quite meet up to ChatGPT just yet is it doesn't have the ability to create images using a, a platform like Dali, which is something that ChatGPT has an advantage of. But what Grok will do is Grok will give you specific image prompts that you can then take to Dolly or Microsoft Image Creator or Leonardo AI or a Crea or any of the other image to video or image or text to image services and it can help you improve that those prompts and actually use them there accordingly. So that's it for this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.